Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv and today I'm excited to continue our discussion on loader max and image loaders. And in the previous tutorials we discussed in depth what an image loader is, what loader max is, and we also discussed the numerous events, properties, and methods of loader max and image loaders. So we were able to very easily create a little gallery that loads in four images and tracks the progress of the child images and the total image load. Today with Loader Max, what we're going to be doing is discovering the XML loader. And now the XML loader will load an XML file, and if it detects Loader Max related nodes such as image loader or even an MP3 loader or a video loader or a Swift loader, it will automatically load all the assets that have their load attribute set to true. So what does this mean? Well, an XML file, is just a file that contains some well formatted data. And you'll see in this XML file that I have open in Dreamweaver that inside of our data node we have these image loader nodes and they have a number of attributes. We set the name property, the URL of the image we want to load, the estimated bytes, so that will help loader max determine the total amount that it needs to load. Here is that load equals true attribute. Unless load equals true is present, the XML loader will ignore that asset. So these are all the assets that I want to auto load and I'm setting the X and Y property of each image and the initial alpha. So all these settings can happen in the XML. Last week we discussed the just using a plain loader max where we appended new image loaders to a loader max queue and here you'll see some of those same properties. So what we're going to be doing this week is focusing on keeping this data external to our FLA file. So if we want to change the image, um, the order the image loads, and the position of the image, we can do that without touching the FLA file. Now you really need to watch part one in this series so that you can understand the basics of loader max, the image loader, and the different events that we use to track the progress of the entire queue and the individual loader. And we talked a lot about the different events that get passed into the event handlers and all the different data that you have access to and we also talked a bit about the content display object so being that we have this background we can go fairly quickly through this XML loader tutorial so I'm gonna jump over to my XML loader start file and you're gonna see things that look very familiar to you uh, the general imports that we have for working with Greensock and the loading classes and we're also going to be activating the image loader and the reason for this is because inside of my code for this file there's nothing that mentions mentions an image loader so when the file is compiled it's not going to know to uh, have the image loader activated because the image loaders are coming in externally so we give loader max a little bit of a hand and tell it hey activate the image loader if I was also loading video files from that XML I would also have to activate the video loader so the first thing we do is we set up an XML loader. And similar to an image loader, it's going to load a certain file from a certain location. Uh, we're giving it a name, which we haven't really discussed too much, but we'll get into it. And Max Connection says that only one asset will load at a time. The estimated bytes here refers to how big my XML file is, so I'm just saying it's roughly 5K. And just like with the image loaders, and the loader max loaders, we have an on complete and an on progress event listener set up. And inside of my progress handler, it's the same as we did before, where we're targeting the or we're finding out the progress of the loader that fired this event. So event.target is the actual loader that's firing off the progress event. Again, we've done this all before. In my queue complete handler, we're just tracing out everything loaded. So let's take a look at what happens when I test this file out. You will see, eventually, that this progress bar just shot up. Let me just make sure that my download settings are set to DS, DSL for now. And you'll see that here we're seeing some progress. Now this progress, the total progress, is the cumulative progress of the XML file loading and all of the images. Now we don't see any images here because when we're using XML loaders, we have to manually 
tell Loader Max where on the display list to place our images. But in fact, they are all loading. And so what we're going to do is add an image complete handler that's going to put the image on the stage where we want it and tween it in. So right now, all I'm doing is loading an XML file, but all of those images are loading. And let's just put some more information into my queue complete handler. And what I'm going to do is trace out the events dot target content. And in the case of an XML loader, the content is the raw XML that you've loaded. So let's just test this out. And now you'll see in my output window here that this is the exact content of my XML file. So I know that that file loaded and there's the XML exactly like we saw it in Dreamweaver. Now the next thing I want to do is figure out, okay, what do I know about each image that is loading? So I'm going to need to put in um, an on child complete handler here. The on child complete handler is going to refer to when a child element of that loader XML loader data gets loaded. So I'm just going to do a quick little copy and paste here to avoid typos and keep things quick. And let's just say, boom, we're going to add my on child progress and my on child complete. All right, I already have these event handlers built in here. Look, I was hiding something from you. And the image progress handler is just going to change the scale X of the progress bar uh, that we have for the child elements there. So if we test this right now, now you can see the progress of each individual child. So this bar is going to grow four times. So again, all I'm doing is throwing an XML file at loader max and it's loading everything and tracking everything. It's up to me to put in code that's going to respond to those events. If we look at the image complete handler, you'll see that it traces out some image loaded. Well, if I want to know more information about the image that loaded or if I want to target it, I could trace out the event dot target that's one place to start and you'll see now that in my output here we have some image loaded and then we show the actual image loader for the whale the image loader for the crab for the lobster and uh, one of them is missing and you'll see that bird is not loading because I had taken out load equals true so let me just very quickly go back and put that in I'm going to go over to Dreamweaver, and now if I say load equals, and in quotes, true, and it's not load A, all right, I'm going to just do a file, save as, and I just want to make sure I'm saving it into the right spot. So into my Loader Max intro image loaders tutorial, I have an XML folder. That's where I'm going to save it. I'll hit replace, and now you'll see that I made a change outside of Flash, and the next time my Swift gets loaded up, you will then see that, in fact, the bird does load. Now, you may be wondering, well, how come all this happens before I see the XML? Isn't the XML the first thing that loaded? Well, whenever you put an on complete handler onto a XML loader that is loading in child elements, on complete refers to when not only the XML has loaded, but all of the child elements have loaded as well because it's the cumulative progress of the XML and the individual images. So I pretty much know everything that I need to know about every image. If I also say event.target.url, that's going to give me the URL of every loader that fired that event. So now you'll see we just have images whale, images crab, images lobster. And there's a lot of information that you can get out of these events. But what I'm really interested in is the actual content of that loader. And again, that is going to be the content display object. We go into that in the first tutorial. And so now when everything loads up, you'll see that once an image loads, the content is the content display. And that is what I want to target when I'm putting items onto the stage, the actual content display object that contains my loaded bitmap data. So I'm just going to do like I did in the last tutorials and I'm going to say var loaded image is going to be a content display object and it's going to be equal to whatever the event dot targets content is 
and we'll just type that as a content display. All right. Once I can target that loaded image in the image complete handler, I can then add it to the stage. I can say add child loaded image, and I can also tween it in. Um, let's just add it right now and let's see what happens. Well, nothing's going to happen. And why is that? Well, my initial alpha is equal to zero. So those objects are being placed on stage. I just can't see them. So we're going to also do that tween. I'm going to say tween light to loaded image. And we'll just take one second and we'll fade the, excuse me, alpha to one. And now you'll see each image loads. Voila, in sequence. Now you're saying, that looks a little bit funky. Well, if you remember back from our first tutorial, these images that I'm loading from the images directory are all something like 640 by 300, and we've been scaling them down with code. So that's each image loading in sequence. And there's my bird. And what I'm going to do now is on the image complete handler, I could do this in the XML or I could do it in Flash. It really doesn't make much difference. But I want to tell the loaded image to set its scale x property to be the same as the loaded image dot scale y. And we're just going to cut them in half. All right. And so now we have four images loading. They fade in. We're tracking the total progress and the progress of all the children elements. When they're done loading, they fade in. And now it's really important that you guys understand that I have virtually no data about this image, these images inside my FLA. I'm simply loading a single XML file. We're tracing out the content of that XML. You've seen it a hundred times. And via these events, I can track and respond to when the entire queue is loaded, when each individual image is loaded, and see all the progress along the way. Inside of my XML, I have all of my image loaders. And if I wanted to get a little bit funky here, I could say, you know what, let's load the whale last. And I could move it down here, copy it, and paste it. And then also, maybe we'll load the uh, lobster first. And this is just going to change up our load order a little bit. So I'm not doing anything in Flash. And I'm just going to save my XML go back into Flash, and there we go. So I could have loaded 100 images if I want. And again, all I'm doing is chucking in an XML file and specifying what events I want to respond to. And by analyzing that event info, I can easily target each image that loads as soon as it's done loading. So really, it's not much more difficult than doing it the way we did last, where we appended by hand all of our images in the queue. So the powers of loading external data are massive, makes your sites really dynamic, and uh, really if you watch this entire series you're going to know a lot about working with Loader Max and the various types of image loaders. In the remaining time I'm just going to give you a little bit of a bonus here and I want to discuss what that name attribute does for us. You'll see that I gave each image loader very easy to remember names like lobster, crab, bird, and whale. And these names allow us to very easily target the content of these loaders. So I'm just going to, in Flash, put in a little bit of a bonus at the bottom here. And I'm going to say, hey, stage, add event listener. And what I want to do is target the whale at some point and maybe spin it around. So we're going to do a mouse event, click. And I'm going to say, uh, whale spin. Okay. And my function whale spin is going to accept, of course, a mouse event. And we'll void that out. And now, if I want the whale to spin around, I can target it via loader max dot get content. And then I'm going to put in the actual name. So I'm just going to put in the name whale. That is the name attribute inside my loader max. And I'm going to say, let's just say dot alpha equals 0.2. Okay, so I'm going to wait for everything to load. I click the stage and I targeted the whale there. All right, if I wanted to tween the alpha of that whale fading out, I could do something like a tween light dot 2. I'm still going to be targeting that whale, 
and I'm going to take one second and I'm going to set the uh, alpha down to zero. All right. So just to show you, we can use that name attribute to target the content of these individual loaders very easily after they have loaded. So there's also a get loader method, which we'll discuss at some point as well. So I click anywhere on the stage and the whale fades out. Pretty cool, huh? I know it didn't work. I know a lot of you guys aren't watching right now. Tween light to loader max dot get content whale. Take one second and we're going to tween your alpha to one. And of course that didn't work because I really meant to put in zero. All right, listen, I need you guys to help me in this point. So let's test the movie out. Click. And there you go. So please guys get excited, download all the files, watch the first video, Adobe stop calling me. And uh, we're gonna keep going. I'll talk to you soon.